This is who will win the 2021 MVP, with legitimately five NBA superstars capable of separating themselves as the favorite, this video breaks down each player's case to win the award, and then make sure you stick around for my official prediction of this year's most valuable player. If you're a subscriber, welcome back to DFlow Hoops. If you're new here and interested in the NBA, you came to the right place, welcome aboard. Please subscribe and hit notifications so you're updated every time I upload, which is at least twice a week. Leading off the first of five candidates is Denver's man in the middle, the greatest passing center of all time, Nikola Jokic. After Denver had a slow start with Nikola's right-hand man Jamal Murray struggling, the centers carried his nuggets to the seventh seed in the stacked Western Conference by posting averages of over 26 points, 11 rebounds, and 8 assists. Before this year, we knew Jokic had an array of post moves, most notably the one-footed fadeaway, aka the Sambor shuffle, but what's made Nikola so impossible to defend this year is how he's combining that post-up ability with his improved quickness. You can tell this is the most mobile Nikola's ever been in his career, and that's forced defenders to have to pick their poison. Everything that the Joker has in his offensive bag gives his opponents nightmares. Now it's time for my fellow Canadian Jamal Murray to find his rhythm and contribute more, which he should, and I think the Nuggets will get to the 4th or 5th seed in the West, putting Jokic in a solid position for the MVP. Stay tuned to see if I think he'll win it. Secondly, there's Joel Embiid, and since I made a separate video on him a few weeks ago, the Sixers big man has continued his dominance and kept the Sixers at the number one seed in the East. The fifth year pro from Kansas is in the best physical shape of his life averaging career highs in scoring and efficiency. While Embiid's always been the main factor to Philly's success whenever he's healthy enough to play on a consistent basis, this year he's taken it to another level, turning himself into the undisputed best mid-range shooter in the NBA. Joel's making an absurd 56.8% of his 4.8 mid-range attempts per game. Since the NBA started tracking zone-based shooting in 1997, the only player who's ever taken at least four mid-rangers per game and made a higher percentage than Embiid this year is the greatest shooter on planet Earth, Stephen Curry, in 2012. Joel's increased his efficiency from this area by about 17 percentage points from 2019-20, and defenses haven't figured out how to stop it. Watching him jab step and pump fake until he has the defense right where he wants them is like watching an artist paint his masterpiece. He's still a force around the rim though, he gets to the free throw line more than anyone in the league, and makes life much easier for his teammates by attracting a ton of attention. And that's not even getting into his defensive impact. The big question now is whether Embiid can keep his mid-range dominance up, and if he can stay on the floor enough games to seriously compete with the top contenders for the MVP. He has missed six games already this season. In his first four seasons coming into this one, he's missed at least 18 games in every season. But overall, Embiid's been the driving factor for the Sixers having the best record in the Eastern Conference right now, and his case to bring home the MVP will be a very strong one if he can keep the Philadelphia 76ers winning games. Moving on to the four-time NBA champion LeBron James, who's looking to secure his fifth career MVP trophy, which would match Michael Jordan. James has defied father time in the first half of his 18th season to put up around 26 points, 8 rebounds, and 8 assists per game on extremely efficient shooting percentages. At age 36, the King's still rising up for dunks with the same reckless abandon that he had in his athletic prime which is insane because he went to eight straight finals with Miami and Cleveland last decade, so you'd think that mileage would have an impact. But in 2021, LBJ's having one of the most dominant seasons of his career. Unfortunately, his partner in crime, Anthony Davis, just tragically went down with an Achilles injury. I'll get to the repercussions of that, but the brow had this to say about LeBron before he got hurt on February 11th. Quote, he's doing everything he's always done. He's averaging almost a triple double, he's playing unbelievable basketball. What I'm saying is nothing you haven't heard already, but from the start of the season to now, he's shown why he's in the MVP race, and I think he's number one in that race. He's continuously playing at a high level for our group. 
I think Coach definitely hit it on the head when he said LeBron should win. You never know all the politics and stuff, but he should. And something Davis also touched on, which I'll quickly break down for you, is LeBron's deep range shot. Defenders can't go under screens like they could in the past when guarding LeBron because he's shooting a career second best 38.1% from beyond the three point line. He's the Lakers' only player whose time on the bench results in the team having a negative net rating. The Lakers are 14.5 points per 100 possessions better when he plays rather than when he sits. And LeBron's going to have to put the team on his back even more now with AD sidelined into the near future. But if he can keep the Lakers in the top one to three of their conference for the rest of the season, he's in solid shape to bring home the MVP for the first time since 2013. Meanwhile, in the Bay Area, Stephen Curry's putting up a damn good case himself to bring home this year's MVP. If the chef won, it'd be his third trophy, and he's been coming through when the Warriors need him the absolute most this year. For example, at the end of January, rookie big man James Wiseman injured his left wrist, leaving Golden State with no traditional centers, and since that game where James got hurt, Curry's averaging 36.3 points per game while shooting a mind-boggling 49.5% from three-point range while taking 13 attempts per night from out there. His head coach Steve Kerr should probably be playing in more than 33.7 minutes per game because Curry's supporting cast is clearly limited, yet Steph's 31st in the NBA in minutes per game, behind the likes of Tyler Harrow, RJ Barrett, and even the Cavs rookie Isaac Okoro. Despite that, after missing all but just five games last year with wrist surgery, he's turned the dead last Warriors in 2019-20 into a team that's currently in the playoffs in 2021. The first 28 games of this season have proved Curry hasn't taken a step back as he's posting stats that resemble his unanimous MVP campaign in 2016. With the personnel around him almost completely different than a few years ago, Curry's still able to lead a team that would be bottom feeders without him into a playoff seat. That's because Steph is the Warriors system. When asked about his MVP chances, his coach Steve Kerr had this to say, quote, how could he not be? He's otherworldly. It's routine, which is the crazy part about it. You come to expect it. And these threes that he hits when there's just nothing there offensively, and he just uses his dribble to free himself up, not exactly with a ton of space, just a few inches of space, and then he rises up, and you expect every single one of them to go in. It's kind of crazy. He's in a really good groove, end quote. And Steve Kerr really said it all about Curry's game right there. The final favorite I'll break down before my prediction is Kevin Durant, who's now leading his third all-time great big three in Brooklyn, making an inspiring comeback from his Achilles tear that kept him out all of last season. Kevin's leading the Eastern Conference in all-star votes, and of course is in the MVP discussion, which has been one of the best storylines in the league this year. While Durant's currently sidelined with a hamstring injury, plus he's also missed time with injury recovery and health and safety protocols, in the 18 games he has played in, he's been going off. The Slim Reapers returned to full form, posting averages of 29 points, 7 boards, and 5 dimes on elite shooting splits. This is all happening after an injury that typically ends a player's career or significantly diminishes their value. But Durant has the same fundamentally sound lower body balance on his off-the-dribble three-point shots than he did before he had surgery, as he's averaging a career best 43.4% from beyond the three-point line. Additionally, KD's mesmerizing momentum dribble combinations at 6'9 look sharper and smoother than they've ever been, and he's showing off a shockingly quick first step. In the post, his high arcing fadeaways haven't dropped off either, but to seriously compete for this award, Durant's going to have to miss less than 20 games, which isn't looking likely at this point. Now to my official prediction for the award. Since members of the mainstream media are in charge of selecting the MVP, how many times a player won the trophy, whether he's won it recently, these things come into play. That's why Giannis, although he's a dark horse contender this year, hasn't been brought up in this video. He's won the MVP in back-to-back -back years before this one, therefore he's a less sexy pick for the award if you're a media member looking for a story. Another important factor you can't overlook is how much team success matters. Every MVP winner from 2010 to 2020, other than Russell Westbrook, has led their teams to a number one seed. But Russ did prove with his team as the number six seed in his 2017 MVP year that you can win this trophy with historically great numbers and a flashy playstyle. 
Considering that, before my official prediction, I'm narrowing the top three favorites down to LeBron James, Nikola Jokic, and Stephen Curry. While Durant and Embiid will continue to have incredible years, I just don't see them staying on the floor enough to stay in the race as the season progresses. Meanwhile, LeBron hasn't won an MVP trophy since 2013, making the aforementioned voter fatigue a non-issue, and the storyline of tying MJ is something the media will latch onto. Still though, Jokic and Curry will be putting the entire team on their shoulders on a nightly basis. In February, Nicole has already had two triple doubles, and Steph just became the first player since MJ to score 25 plus points on 50% shooting or better in 10 straight games. You can expect these performances to keep up, but I just don't see those two having enough team success to overtop the narrative of James tying Jordan in MVPs. Even though the Jazz deserve another video on this channel made about them for winning 19 of 20, LeBron's Lakers are still only two games back of them. Even if the Red Hot Utah Jazz finish first, I see LBJ winning the MVP. Let me know who you think is the MVP down below and leave a thumbs up on this video if you enjoyed my take. Follow me on Instagram to stay updated on the channel and to be friends. This was DFlow and I'll see you next video.